Okay, so today instead of architecture, we're just going to talk about wall design. So just some of the interesting things that you can do with walls, both decorations and colors that will make things more interesting. I'm going to do like a standard, a fancy, a hagen, and I didn't mean to, but we're also going to do like a candy style. Um, I'd seen some gingerbread houses and I accidentally kind of did one. So the first thing we'll do is just a basic style. We're going to use some of the bricks we'll get in furrow field, like the wooden floor and the wooden wall. Um, a good way to start straight off the bat to make things interesting is just to use a different but similar block for pillars um, and trying to use slightly different colored woods. So one thing we want to do here just to test out a more interesting style is to do a roof without a lip. Um, lips are a great way to automatically make an interesting roof, but let's test what we can do without one. So these wooden panels that we get in Crumbledon are really interesting and textured and a great way to add a design to a simple structure. Um, you can also use them to do things like create little fences. They do need to be against something, but here we'll just create a little extra addition to the front design by adding a little box area. It's little things like that. I mean, if you had wood poking out of the top, it would look like a firebox. Um, and using, because we've used a white roof, we can pick a different accent color. Um, so because it is wood, green would be great. And to add a little bit, again, of texture on that wall, putting in curtains um, behind everything is going to really help. Um, often you'll just need to get rid of your doors and windows if you're going to put them against it, but it doesn't affect the functionality of you coming in and out. And so even just like that, you've gone from a basic sort of structure, which is still quite bricky, to something more interesting. And now we can try a few different things. Um, it looks a little strange, but I actually kind of like it, especially if you put roof around it, having some planter boxes there and you put some flowers in it. Also, because we've got the curtains inside, having some on the outside would be nice. Um, and you can use your shifting sands to do things like adding, say, a vine. Again, because we're using wood and greenery, uh, that's something that's really helpful. And also these wooden pillars. They're really hard to place. You kind of have to check which angle you want them on. But they add a lot of definition to the corners of rooms like that. So the other thing we can do is put in like a little roof cap. An easy way to do that is just grab your ulti mallet and grab some corners um, and then some flat pieces. And we can put little caps around. Um, if we didn't want to use, say, the castle style decorations, we could also just do like a white awning. And again, because we've used the greenery, we want to put maybe at least a tree near the house and never underestimate the power of grass um, it really adds a lot of texture and definition um, so if you're just doing something quick and basic that is an easy way to make it more interesting and the second one we're doing is essentially just going to be a fancier version with a lot of the same materials so we'll just chip out some of the wood to replace it with some white Back here we have a palette wall. It's not in yet. It'll be in the next update of my island, but it does help pick colours. Um, usually also we probably shouldn't use paint buckets like this, but because we're just building the front of the house to get an idea of how we decorate, we don't need to worry. I will do a whole set though of the white wood because we're going to need a fair bit. The white wooden floorboard is definitely the brightest white, so if you want a dramatic white, use that. A lot of the other ones have a grey tone to them. And we are wanting to really focus on that dramatic white border and what will be the roof and the door. So to start with, we we're going to start with an arch door. It does end up becoming a sort of wraparound. Um, but if we're doing something big like this, having something uh, extra to add to the drama, like a little bit of wooden grating or a carved mural there is always a good idea. And if we want to have a dramatic door like that, we don't want to have huge windows that are also going to overpower that effect. When we're decorating, we need to pick one or two things to draw the eye. So now that we've got the little windows, we can start thinking about what else we want to do. And I do want to put a little awning over the door now. So obviously that takes out that curve, but it still gives me an idea of what we're doing. And I wanted to put in some of those wooden pillars. We'll be using that a lot um, in tutorials because it really helps add a dynamic effect to the corners. 
So I did want to make the windows too a little bit bigger because even though we want them small, you couldn't really see them once we had the awning on them. So now they're a bit longer, but we didn't want to make them wider. So once we've done this, we're going to swap over to the uh, bright blue roof dyed, the fancy roof dyed white, because it's outside bits of white and we don't want that brown inside making it look awkward. And also, instead of going up in a traditional pyramid, we're going to make this more curved by going in one and then going two, two, two. Once we've done that and we have popped down a piece of roof on each bit, you can see a little bit more how that creates a nice curve and doesn't look as awkward as you would, you would think it is without trying it. Um, and it's a good use for these flat pieces, which often we all just use for big flat spaces, but they can be used to help create a nice effect as well. So with a pointy gable roof like this, we almost always want to do a lip in this game because we need to put in those brackets so it doesn't look so sort of shark toothy um, and dyed white like the rest of the roof is going to help it all blend in. So once we've got these flat pieces down to connect the roof and put in the wooden brackets, we can see that that makes a huge difference and we can chip out the uh, white to add red to make it more fit in. If you wanted, you could just add a little bit more red and just have it like this. It's kind of a bit of a barn style, but I wanted to use those dyed red um, wall decorations. So I went and put the white back in so it was 222 again, and then we want to put them all down the sides. So the wooden brackets too, I need to mention, you need to sort of work out what angle you need to stand on because they're only in one corner of the block. So if I put them there, they would be on the inside. That wouldn't look bad, but we want to extend the curve. So I put them on the outside and it really helps create a larger sort of presence to the front of that structure. And once we've placed that in, it's starting to look quite nice and fancy. Um, and I wanted to have some planter boxes at the front, um, but not actual planter boxes because we want to use crops that are only half grown. We'll go through that in a minute. Um, if you want to do this, plant your crops nearby and you'll need to keep an eye on them because we need to pull them out at whatever stage you want them because they're not going to exist in that form in your Builderpedia, if that makes sense. These are kind of the flowers that you have to keep an eye on to grow. So if we put some blocks here just to hold the curtains, we can pop them on and it's a bit hard to dig out the blocks. You need to go from the other side. So we'll just quickly um, get rid of the door to do it and then pop it back in. And I figured we'd put a second layer here as well and chisel it down. That's another great way just to add detail to the front of something is just do a second row of it chiseled half down and just adds a bit of a dynamic effect at the front. <coughs> Pathway as well, I decided that although it was dramatic, the carved tiles, because the rest of this looks quite dramatic, was a nice fit. We can see on the left as well that our buckwheat's starting to grow. And I know it's got two sizes of flower, a budding and a full bloom before it goes into buckwheat as a, an actual plant. So we want to keep an eye and grab some at both stages. So here we've got the bud first, obviously. And like I said, these aren't going to exist in your Builderpedia. You have to kind of just grab crops. And as long as they're not on a piece of tilled earth, uh, they will just stay in that form. And that's true for anything. Um, like they'll exist on any tile, I should say, as long as they don't need water. So in my lavender town, they're on spoiled soil um, in some spots, and it's not actually making them die so far. And now we've got the full blooms as well, so we'll throw them around. We want some in our planter boxes at the front, but also just a few around the building. If we're doing like a decoration, I guess the idea is in a place like this, it looks quite natural, or not natural, but it's a nice barn area, so they probably planted local flowers. Um, and then I grabbed a few of the fancy milk blossoms with the butterflies, because I felt like, again, it was a dramatic build. So again, really, that was using mostly the same stuff that we'd used in the first one, just coloured and used a little bit differently. So now we'll try a Hagen style build. And remember, I'm doing these, not to say that the buildings you're doing are going to look exactly like mine. Obviously, we're only doing the front. It's just to give you ideas on whatever building you're doing, whatever shape it is, to decorate accordingly, essentially. 
um, sometimes it can be hard to work out exactly what you want to use. So here using those castle top pieces as a second layer is a great way to add some detail and if we chisel a little bit down it's going to look like there's a balcony there. Um, and in terms of doors obviously the barred doors are an obvious choice but something like the dyed black doors is also handy and they do have the curves on the side but you can just pop a block and chisel it up on either side and that will stop there having that um, gap in the back. And so as well here just to do something slightly interesting we've put in the castle windows all at different levels just to create an interesting arch and it's kind of in a pyramid shape but then it curves down so it's just going to give something that draws the eye. Um, it's still quite plain at the front though so if we put in some dyed light boxes it's going to look nice and the pink ones dye a light red so you can get a bit more variation using those. Now it'd be fine to leave the windows but just to show more instead we could have the vile visages along the top they give a nice dramatic effect and I've put in a wooden fence just to show that you don't always have to use all stone in a Hagen build and here as well we've got the uh, torched trees I think they're called and so they're the ones that produce smoke and it's quite a high effect great for Hagen builds to add a bit of drama. Um, plus as well if you grab some of those septic shrubs and all the dead grass that's going to add that nice sort of dead effect and here we're actually going to pop a torch tree down in the base you could always do this in like a chimney or hidden in a wall coming out the side um, and that's just going to give it more of that smoky effect more of those effects uh, just sort of draw the eye up to the top where those vile visages are. And now um, I think we'll just have a little bit of a play with magnetic blocks in this one um, and we'll use it to create an interesting entrance. So a magnetic block can camouflage as any other block but it only takes up one block space instead of the entirety of what the texture usually would. So this tree usually would take up a 4x2 but with the magnetic block it's only going to take up one and we just need to rotate the block itself to rotate the piece. So it takes a bit of playing around um, to work out exactly where you want things but it is a great way to add dimension to decorations and it's a lot of what you'll see a lot of complex decorations are made of. So here I want to try and position it so that it's arching around those red lanterns um, and you will need to again like I said play here this one ends up needing to be on top of the fence but I think the other one isn't quite in exactly the same position because you'll notice when you rotate stuff with the magnetic block it doesn't always end up exactly where you think it's going to end up um, sometimes especially with multi-block um, objects it's hard to tell where the center point of rotation is sometimes but here we'll see that way it's going to pretty perfectly curve over the top but it covers the lantern too much for me so I go ahead and put it one back and then try and do the same with the other one to see if I can create the same effect. It's always a good idea too to position the block in the direction you want first before you work out where you need to place it. So something else we could do with a lot of magnetic blocks is use the tainted trees and just put them all up in a row to have a big withered looking tree and we're just using the leaves here as supports. So I decide as well just in the end to put a little bit of a ghost peeking out. Um, he's kind of hidden in the tree but I think that's a nice effect. And again, so I threw in some mushrooms as well uh, just because they're pink and it leads on with that red theme. So now we're going to have a go at a bit of a candy themed house. I hadn't intentionally started to do this but when I, uh, I was looking at the wall and it just sort of looked like chocolate wafers once I put the pink in the middle. And I had seen all of the buildings where people had used the white and pink slimes as like cream puffs. So I thought we'd give that a go. So it's a good idea with the puffs, they take up only one block, but they tend to extend out a bit. So if you have it just one block out from a building, um, it'll help. I guess give it a little bit more dimension and even here now um, you could have a really simple build like that that just had a door in it and that would be a great like sort of candy store or a cake store. Um, we're going to go sort of over the top by the end but again it's just to show all the different ways you can you can decorate. So another great way to decorate a candy theme is to use the coloured 
buttons. Um, just be careful, obviously, if you're using magnetic blocks to flip switches um, where you're putting buttons and what happens when you press them. Um, but if you're not using that, that, if you're not using the magnetic blocks to flip switches, it's fine. So I went and swapped as well. You can see some of the or alternate uh, slimes with pink just to give it a bit more dimension. And now we're going to try and do some bay windows like those wooden um, pillars. They are very hard to place. It's just coming at the block from each direction and working out which way it's going to tile correctly and go from that direction. Um, you can always just sit there turning things, but I find it's easier to just go from the direction. And so here as well, I've put in slimes across the top of the windows because there was the gap um, and just some curtains as well to keep it interesting. And I brought that uh, front block uh, one forward under the window just so we can still see the color. Now, I really am loving the pastel dye of the stucco and the plaster so I wanted to combine those two pinks because there's not a lot of opportunities that you would get to so we're going to do it for this roof and it looks really pretty so we're just going to go in lines of two and we want to go up in a sort of side gable so a pointy roof with the gable facing to the side um, but we don't want to make it perfectly pointed up we want to have a little bit of dimension in it so like I've done before if we go one up and one flat a few times it's going to add more dimension to a roof and here as well we're just putting a bit of purple bunting as again we want to sort of make this pretty extra by the end this particular one so you know if you're trying to go extra don't be scared to just put too much stuff even to the point where it looks really loud um, you can always take stuff off and you won't know what it looks like unless you put it up there so I decided as well you can see here for the um, corners or the edges of the roof to go with all pink slimes um, and just a slight again another curve so we're kind of going one up and across. Um, I had originally had all the slimes facing away but um, at first I didn't like the pink slime faces they're a bit creepy but it kind of grew on me um, especially because it is very much part of the game. So in this build as well, sometimes if you're going to have something sickly sweet like this, or at least just very heavy on one color, you need to pick a few things that differentiate it. So that caterpillar is a great way to give a green pop to all of that pink and white and just contrast it heavily. Same reason that we want to make sure we put some greenery and shrubs and things around because we get, we just want to break up that really sickly amount of bright white and pink that we have. Now, even though I say that, we're going to go and put a fair bit of additional pink in, including some leaves on the ground. I put in a little snow path just because I wanted it to not have really hard edges on the block. And the petals can be dyed of all different colours, so it's nice to sort of have them all around. And even things like uh, that you wouldn't usually expect, like say an aquarium piece in this, the uh, sea anemones look really nice, I think, with this because they look very sort of jelly-ish. Now I wouldn't probably, even though I said pops of green, I probably wouldn't use a plumberry tree with this much pink because you want any accent contrast colour to be a small amount and a plumberry tree is going to be a big green blob, it's probably going to be too much. So pink and yellow trees because we need to complement those warm colours is going to be a better idea. And then the purple is different enough that it stands out but it's not like an extreme difference like a heavy blue that would be too much of a different accent. Um, as well I wanted to break up that roof a little bit so we just put on a brick, uh, a brick border and some bunting as well. So that is it for this one. You can see I put a bunch of like strawberries and flowers around as well. But I generally kept to the pink and white colours. So whenever you're doing a heavy colour, keep to that colour for most of the decorations as well with a slight contrast just to accent it. So that's it. Uh, yesterday I put out a tour of my Cerulean step which is now Sandy Highlands and tomorrow I'll be doing a new architecture video but if there's anything you need just let me know.